Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 42. Now, this episode is my friend Vince Rossello. And Vince and I met years ago. Um, I'm horrible with time perception, so I couldn't tell you exactly when. Maybe five? Five, six years ago, something like that. Um, he played the bongos on stage for a, a friend of ours message, and I played the bass guitar with... Uh, one of my favorite guitarists of all time, Slim Gillian of Fellow Bliss. Definitely check them out. Um, and we hadn't really talked uh, one-to-one, like man-on-man, one-to-one conversation. And Vince is amazing. Um, like, I already knew because I'd followed him uh, on Instagram and Facebook. I followed him in real life. False. I followed him on uh, Instagram and Facebook. And he is one of the most inspiring people I think I know. Uh, Vince went from like over 400 pounds and losing over 200. He lost half of his body weight. And uh, we talk about that, um, what exactly went into that, the mindset, why he decided to make that change. um, And all those life choices that he made to go from uh, obese to what he calls unbeast. But Vince is just a really, really cool guy. He also is really passionate about uh, turtles and tortoises. Um, I love tortoises. I always wanted one growing up. And uh, for a while we talked about that. I learned so much about them, like different dietary needs. And, like, he basically has a tortoise farm in his backyard. He's got a bunch of them, and he built this habitat. Um, So we talk about everything that went into that, um, different animal conservation things that he's passionate about. And, uh... You know, it was just a really, really good talk. And I think anyone who's thinking about making a life change or just wants to be inspired, you're really, really going to enjoy this episode. And I was so glad that Vince took the time uh, to hang out and talk. Um, We actually met at a Starbucks and just chatted for a while. So, yeah, I think you guys are going to enjoy this one. It's really, really cool. You're definitely going to learn something. I'll tell you that. Uh, But without further ado, here's uh, the interesting podcast Episode number 42 with Vince Rossello. Theme song time. also had like a ton of technical problems yeah like i recorded one uh it was the mausler episode okay and i didn't engage the microphones oh wow so it went through these the yeah. top ones so it picked up everything and you can barely <laughs> hear us and that happened probably maybe two or three episodes really where you didn't uh, realize that you know you were yeah where i was like oh look it's recording so that's good yeah. but not through the microphones yeah but well, it's been an experience definitely like the way you interact with everybody, it's like really cool and like really, just like you're having a conversation with somebody you know yeah. forever, or like really right? good friends with or whatever. And so I, it and comes I don't off know, like, that way. And I don't know like anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. I always say that I trick people to talk to me for an hour and at yeah. the end I just have the best friends and I'm like, I'm just collecting friends like Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this that's is the cool. first time we've talked like yeah. uh, at length. Yeah. When did we meet? Was well, it at Bishop's thing? Well, I think the the first time I actually met you was probably at a uh, Fellow Bliss concert. I know that you were always at those. Oh, and yes. A couple of good friends of mine were in that band, and we would always kind of cross paths and know each other through that. Uh, we haven't really sat down and had a conversation, though. I've, yeah. I've wanted to for a long yeah. time because you're really, like, a cool dude, and, like, you're really Stop doing it. a lot of amazing things, like, you know, and I've just been following you. I like, try. Yeah, follow <laughs> you on social media and stuff, and, like, it's really cool. It's, you know, like. Really like it, you know. Sure, you know, sure. Going for and stuff. Because I remember, oh, I remember <laughs> uh, Bishop's message that he gave a while back, yeah. and then you were playing the bongos, <laughs> yeah, and I was playing the bass. Yeah, that's cool. And I think that was our like interaction that we yeah. had prior to this, and then outside of Fellow Bliss, yeah, which is still my favorite band of all time. Yeah, actually, I haven't thought about that in so long. I remember when he was doing that and giving those messages, and like he. 
he really inspired me to like kind of do stuff that I wasn't comfortable doing. Like sure. I love I love playing bongos and djembe and like percussion instruments. He's like, hey man, come and do this. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm good at it. I just sure. like it's just like a hobby. I like I enjoy it. He's like, no nah, man, it's good. You're like, and he, he was like such an incredible drummer. And I was just like, man, was I okay? He, he's right. like. He's like, well, I remember what he told me. He's like, well, I didn't hear anything that sounded bad, so that must mean it was good. <laughs> I'm like, okay. That That's makes sense because he's like a real musician, and he knows what he's listening for. So it, ma- it gave me a ton of confidence, and I still play to this day. And Do I'm you like, really? Yeah, I really enjoy it. It's right like, on. Yeah, it's really fun. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I was just freaking out the whole time because Slim was up there playing yeah. guitar. Yeah. And Slim, being in my favorite band of all time, I was like, I'm <laughs> playing with Slim. Yeah. And I'm just like little bass, little bass notes because yeah, I really don't know cool. what I'm doing as either. But <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. That it's was fun cool. to do things that you don't really know what you're doing. Just right? go for it. On you know? stage, in yeah. front of people, because yeah. why not? <laughs> yep. That was good, though. That was good. That was a while ago. Yeah, it have to be years. But yeah. Years ago. Man. But you've been good? Yeah. You look good? You look very different? Thank you. Yeah. You look very different? Yeah. How much, how much weight have you lost? Well, um, I've lost over 225 pounds. <gasps> so, you know, it's a journey, and it's a fitness uh, kind of adventure, you know, like, and so I, I've put on a couple pounds since then but i'm very into uh, you know lifting weights and, and yeah. the gym and everything so uh i'm lost over to this date uh 212 pounds and that's over 50 wow. percent of my total weight that when i started at 425 sure that is <laughs> nuts yeah Man, how, okay you know we're starting from the beginning okay are you from here yeah i'm all uh, i grew up in cape coral florida really? yeah uh my whole life probably four years old when my mm-hmm. my family moved down here gotcha from where uh, they moved from Long Island and New York. Really? Yeah. yeah. Have you been back? Uh, you know, as a kid, we would go back every once in a while and visit grandparents and stuff like that. But I don't really have any other attachments there. So sure. I haven't been back too much, you know. Like, it, this is home, you know. Yeah. Southwest yeah. Florida is home for sure. Cool, cool. What's it like growing up in Cape Coral? Uh, You're, like, past the toll, like <laughs> Cape Coral proper, I'm assuming? Yeah, 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 deep in the Cape. And, you know, I, I own a home there now. And, you know, it's right still, on. like I said, it's, it's hometown feeling and growing up uh, in Cape Coral was great. You know, yeah. like, it was, you know, I can't compare it to anything else because it's really all I know. But, you know, sure. growing up, uh, especially, you know, uh, late 80s, early 90s, friends were, you know, riding bikes and you friends with all the kids in the neighborhood and, you know, hanging out at the comic shop and stuff like that. So we had all that those things that made me feel good <laughs> sure sure <laughs> yeah so i didn't miss out on too much sure that's cool yeah. that's cool now i'm gonna bounce around you yeah, probably noticed add you just go yeah, everywhere go, go all over the place um have you always loved turtles always man because always. this is one of my favorite things about you <laughs> you have a ton of them how, yeah. how did this start to well you break know me in this again you know growing up in southwest florida you know you go outside and you're gonna see turtles and you're gonna see uh tortoises and you're gonna see uh different kinds of wildlife and stuff sure and uh that i guess in the combination of obviously teenage mutant ninja turtles you know i loved it and i was so into it and um every once in a while my dad would bring a turtle home he's like oh i found this turtle on the street and then as a kid you have so many and like it was always uh, a hobby of mine and it became Mm -hmm. something i became passionate about conservation and i'm Sure. really into uh you know wildlife and, and scouting wildlife and seeing it in, like in a natural habitat and stuff like that so uh yeah yeah my whole life yeah been, been all about reptiles and turtles and it, it was a big part of my childhood and sure. still to this day is something that i enjoy that's so cool i uh <laughs> you you taught me something about turtles oh yeah when i uh <laughs> when that one wouldn't stay in the lake i had this <laughs> <laughs> I remember that so oh man so i'm like okay i know for a fact <laughs> This turtle is in the water from time to time. Like, I, I've i seen them in the water. I know they live in the water with their feet. They're, this is not a tortoise. This is a box <laughs> turtle. And they go in the water. Yeah. <laughs> and it, like, kept going in the road. Yeah. And if I ever see a turtle in the road, I'm like, okay, put it in the grass. Yeah, you don't want definitely. to get hit by anything, you know? And um, I see turtles all the time for that reason. Oh, there's one. Let's just put it somewhere yeah. safe. Usually in a lake. I'm like, all right, I'll find <laughs> one. That way he just can't go back into traffic, yeah. you know? As opposed to, like just putting him on the sidewalk to where he'll just turn around. And this one would not stay in the lake. And I was like, I'm trying to save you, you turtle. And then I just get this message from you be like, dude, they don't live in the water all the time. I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yo, that is a common common misconception. A lot of people don't realize that, yeah. you know, they'll, they'll find uh, down here we have uh, gopher tortoises, which are endangered <laughs> species, and people will find them crossing the roads. 
and you'll see like they'll throw them in like a canal or something uh, and they, they know how to swim and they know how to float but a lot of times they can't get back out and sure. you know it's just uh, it's an educational thing and I think that uh, you know knowing what you're dealing with and especially helping stuff off the road is huge and it's, it makes a, such a big impact on the wildlife they get they get really torn up by the roads especially when they're moving around the stuff and sure. you know, just people listening slow down if you see a turtle yeah, please exactly. do it for me do it for yeah. do it for wildlife just you don't have to get out and throw it in the in the lake or anything, but you know, slow down, swerve out of the way. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take doesn't how, much effort. <laughs> how many how many turtles do you have now? Right now, uh, I've downsized quite a bit, uh, mm -hmm. but I have, I would say, about twelve. Twelve. Yeah, yeah. and I'd say about twelve. I was actually in my yard yesterday doing some work, and I found a, a baby one. What? You know, every once in a while, you know, they they lay eggs in the, you know, you can't find them all, and eventually you get the babies and you find them outside. So. That's cool. Yeah, it's always a fluctuating number, and I, I like to give them away, people that are interested in, you know, sure. having a pet tortoise and stuff, so. They're all they're all tortoises that you have? Yeah, right now I have all tortoises. Gotcha. All gopher tortoises? Yeah. They're uh, red-footed tortoises. Red-footed tortoises. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you s So did you find one and then go from there? Did you buy one and go from there? Because um, you got, like, a setup. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, you know, well, uh, most <laughs> – it's so funny to think of it like this, you know, uh, I revolve a lot of my my life around tortoises and yeah, like and the house that, that I picked and like the money I spent on you know boat building a fence and how I design my yard and stuff like that because sure. that's you know a passion of mine so I want to do it correctly and uh, the first tortoises I had uh, as an adult I say wow these are what I want to get and it was just somebody had a uh, ad in the newspaper and it was an older guy he's like I got to find homes for a lot of these and really? I bought a few of them and it you know it was really like a personal experience for me and I've had some of the ones that I've had for over 10 years really yeah and I've decided that uh, I don't want to get any more, you know, kind of like you got to manage your hobby a little yeah, bit. Otherwise, it gets out of control, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you don't want to just have 100 tortoises. Yeah, and like, I've, oh. I've had about 50 of them, and have then I really? had to place find homes for, for really good homes for some of them wow. and stuff because, uh, you know, I think a lot of people can relate to this if you're a hobbyist, if you're, you know, collect comics or you, oh, whatever yeah. you do, you end up with way too many things, and you kind of like for it gets sure. overblown really fast. For sure. You had 50 <laughs> tortoises at one point? Yeah. Wow. What it what, what okay? What goes into what you do? Because describe your place because okay. I've seen it in pictures. Yeah, you've got like a tortoise sanctuary as yeah, a backyard. Yeah, pretty much. It's amazing. Yeah, it reminds me of. Did you ever play a uh, Sonic Adventure Two Battle? No, I don't think I've. There's I've this got whole that one. thing where they have like uh, chows. They're like these little creatures, and you go to their little area and you like feed them and make sure <laughs> they're all right, and you can race them and all kinds of That's stuff. That's awesome. But it's this literal thing. I, it might even be called a sanctuary. Yeah. But I think of that every time you post stuff. Yeah. With your tortoises. Well, you know, that's the idea, and that's what I wanted. You know, for a very long time, I actually wanted to do uh, sanctuary and rescue. And mm -hmm. uh, what had happened to me is that there's such a big need for that. Sure. That That's how I had gotten 50 tortoises. But people would just be calling me, you know, a couple times a week. I'm like, oh, I, I need to rehome my turtle. I need to rehome my tortoise. And I'm like, okay. And, you know, you would take them in, in in the hopes of finding, like, a really good home and placing them. And it's just really hard to do because so many people just impulse buy pets. They grow really quick. And, sure. you know, sometimes it becomes uh, a burden, you know, and on people. Yeah, yeah. And, but they have good intentions. They want to find a good home for it. So, yeah, the the yard is a sanctuary for the tortoises. You know, sure. they free roam. And, it, you know, it, it has its challenges. But it's really fun. It's really like a gardening slash, you know, hobby. Area. Yeah. Cool. That's so cool. Are they So all your tortoises are the same type of tortoise yeah right now they're all the same kind have they always been all the same kind no i've had multiple species and really it's it's difficult because you're not supposed to keep them uh in the same enclosures there's really? different yeah there's different dietary needs and different mm. uh habitat needs and stuff like that so it became a huge challenge sure i didn't yeah. know that yeah huh See, I've, I've seen a lot about sulcatas. Yeah, sulcatas are super popular. Massive. Yeah. Uh, they get, like, a baby can ride it yeah, after a decade, like, people don't, years and years yeah, and years. Yeah, sometimes, you know, people don't realize they'll go to a pet shop and they'll see uh, sulcata, or they're called spurt thighs, and they're probably about, you know, when you buy them, you could fit them in the palm of your hand, yeah, and you don't potato. realize <laughs> they are... Uh, I believe the third largest species of tortoise in the world. <laughs> I mean, you always see like the Galapagos tortoises, and you know these tortoises are huge. They get really huge, massive, and they dig huge tunnels and burrows, like in your yard. So you know, and they're a desert species as well. So 
all things to be considered, you know, when you're out there buying a pet tortoise. I mean, yeah, if any, yeah. any listeners out there are thinking about a tortoise, do some research, and it's not, not too hard to do. Just shoot on sure. Google or YouTube or anything. And there's some good ones that make good pets and you could keep indoors, and there's some that you should probably never even consider buying. Really? Yeah, the what? super pot, like a sulcata. Nobody really, I don't feel like you really? should get, no, nah, they get okay. too big. Sure. Unless you have a huge yard and you live in the right climate, Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really difficult to keep them. Really? See, this is one of my favorite things about this podcast specifically because yeah. I learned so much. I didn't know any of this stuff. Yeah. And I love passion. I love talking to people, even if I don't even know what it is. <laughs> and like, I love hearing people talk about things that they're passionate about because yeah. that's the, to be cliche, that's the spice of life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, finding people that are passionate about a specific thing. And I always wanted a tortoise growing up Yeah. because it's like a living heirloom. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Like, imagine if you as a kid – got like a tortoise right and they live forever yeah they live quite a long time and so like you grow up with this tortoise it grows up and then you pass it to your kids and then they grow up with this tortoise and then you pass it to their kids and it's like you all have this turtle that you grew up with and have this memory (laughs) it's pretty cool yeah it's really cool it's awesome do you have a favorite species of tortoise well, I really am fond of uh, the Florida box turtles, one that you found. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the ones that don't yeah, live full-time in the water. These are, <laughs> you know, they're native to our area, first mm-hmm. of all. Uh, they're somewhat endangered. You're not, uh, you're, they're not too common. You don't see them as much as you used to. I, we used to see them when I was a kid. We would see them all the time. Now, rarely do I ever see any uh, crossing the street or anything, really? especially in Cape Coral. I think it's changed a lot. Sure. Uh, super developed over the years which is a good thing for us you know but not for sure. the, the wildlife and stuff they have a hard time with that gotcha have you kept box turtles yeah yeah in the past i've had them and uh kind of just passing through so, kind of you know sometimes yeah, yeah, you know that's so cool yeah so you say different dietary needs different climates and whatnot you aren't supposed to have multiple tortoises of different species in the same thing typically yeah, yeah typically yes interesting what's the hardest tortoise to like meet its needs which one's the most work, I guess, is the best way to well, put it. Well, uh, there are several species of tortoises that are, aren't very common as far as regular people would get them at the pet shop or whatever. But, sure. uh, you know, none are necessarily very difficult to keep. Uh, but there's some that we sell in the stores uh, here. You would see uh, species like a leopard tortoise, mm-hmm. which are native to Africa in the, in the desert. Sure. And so are uh, the sulcatas. However, sulcatas do pretty well outside in Florida. But leopard tortoises are super sensitive to humidity. Oh, no. So, yeah, you know, they'll get, mm. uh, especially if they're not acclimated properly and, you know, they will they don't fare very well. So those are ones that you kind of see for sale a lot. Sure. Uh, I would say the easiest ones to keep are uh, the red-footed tortoises. They're great pets. Uh, they get fairly large, mm-hmm. but it takes a very long time. So you just got to kind of be prepared for that. Sure. And most areas, even if it gets cold in the winter, they could be moved inside and kind of live half half inside and enclosure inside and then when the weather is good can be brought outside and know people in up uh in the eastern northeastern area that keep them mm-hmm. and people in tennessee that keep them and, and different areas like that gotcha so, so okay. you're looking for a pet i would i would go that way and generally those are uh, mostly captive bred as well so they're not taken from the wild anymore because they're so oh, easily kept okay. and reproduce pretty well in captivity so your good chances you're going to get a nice tortoise that was uh, produced by a breeder, which is always great. Right, right. And that's the red-footed tortoise, you see? Yes. Gotcha. Okay, okay. That's very interesting. Yeah, Man, for these, sure. thi- these things. I Tortoises are so cool. Yeah. So cool. And so have you kept turtles, like uh, the water ones? Because I feel um, like that's way more work. Yeah, it's a ton of work. Uh, I've kept them, and it's really hard work. It's, yeah. uh, the, you know, the it's water and the filter. Yeah, yeah. A, if If you have, uh, well, you know, you need to have a pretty big passion for that. Yeah, to yeah. be able to do it and it, for you know for what we have to do to keep them it, it gets expensive too you know because you sure. have to have the right filtration and the right water and if right. you're not it could become hazardous to your health uh and to the animal's health as well and it's not something that you really want to you know deal with too much right so right but with the right preparation and you know again acquiring the right species and what you want to do and the right equipment and the right investment i they're a fun, they're a fun uh, pet to have, too. Sure, sure. So are tortoises, and I'm going to ask really dumb questions. No, go I ahead, man. I'm, talking about. <laughs> I'm glad we're talking about tortoises. You know, yeah. Most people want to talk about the weight loss right? a lot, but, uh, I mean, this we'll is really fun. We'll get there. We'll get yeah, there. Okay, cool. There's tortoises, Vince. Uh, that, no, that's important <laughs> to me. It's important to me now. <laughs> are tortoises like fish in the same way that, like, 
they will grow to the size of their enclosure. No, like, that's not true. They're going to get big. No matter you put in the tank, it's going to outgrow the tank. It's going to outgrow the tank. What will happen is if uh, that's a common, uh, common misconception with a lot of reptiles that they think that, you know, oh, well, I could kind of control its growth by keeping it in a small container or whatever. But no, that's not true. Uh, <laughs> One well, day it's of, just stuck yeah, to the sides. Yeah, a lot of times, and you'll see with tortoises and turtles especially, uh, if they're improperly housed and they're in a small container, they'll become deformed. And it's really sad. And oh, no. They'll, uh, their shell will be misshapen, and they'll mm. uh, develop pelvic issues and stuff like that. And Really? It, yeah, it becomes really detrimental to their health. And, you know, it's not irreversible. A lot of times if you get them outside and you get a proper diet and enclosure, they'll they'll bounce back because they're really resilient, you know, sure. spe- you know in general, all, all species of turtles and tortoises are. Uh, but no, you know, if you get a small container and you try to keep them in there, they're just going to, it's really just going to mess them up as they grow. Gotcha. See, that's crazy because a lot of pet stores I see, they s- they sell sulcatas. Yeah, yeah, they do. Little like potatoes. Yeah. You know, and you think they're the, super th- cute the and, yeah. third largest tortoise in the world. Yeah. And they sell them in stores. Yeah, they sell them super, they're, they're very inexpensive yeah. as far as tortoise. I mean, you probably get one, uh, you know, you could look on Craigslist, you could look at the pet shops and sure. like 50 bucks, you know, and like. Sure. And uh, unfortunately, they've become somewhat of a disposable pet. And it's something mm-hmm. that people, uh, they, it just happens with every, every kind, from dogs and cats to, you know, birds and turtles and tortoises. You look online, there's rescues for all of them. Sure. Most people get them, and they don't know what to do when they get big or they get aggressive or, you know, like there's parrot rescues. There's, you know, sure. there's all kinds of rescues for every kind of different animal. And, and, you know, it's unfortunate, but, I mean, it happens. And I'm really, really happy that there's people out there doing that kind of work because sure. it's very expensive and it's very, you know, difficult to do it properly. Right, right. Man, is there okay? Tell me other common misconceptions about tortoises and having them. Well, a lot of common misconceptions about tortoises, I think, are uh, some of the things that we covered. You know, uh, just not being aware of how big they get. Sure. Uh, Lack of research. Yeah, you do do the research. Uh, the dietary needs are vastly different from species to species. Some eat mostly fruit. A lot of them can't eat any fruit. You know, they can't have really? yeah because uh, their digestive needs and just the way that they're, they're, you know, that's just what they are. The species that they are. They think that oh, a tortoise is a tortoise is a tortoise. But no, there's right. tortoises in almost every climate except for you know where it gets really cold. You know, so mm-hmm. uh, there's a vast difference in dietary needs and uh, hmm. needs for uh, sunlight. And some of them are more prone to being in wooded areas and like rainforest species so they're not really in the sun a whole lot because they live under the canopy and some right. are desert species so they need different different even air quality will affect the tortoise because really? you know yeah the humidity and the the dryness of air is required for a lot of desert species because it affects their health wow yeah and uh ones that live in rainforest and humidity need that high humidity level that's the red-footed tortoise that's why i keep them here we keep them outside year round yeah, yeah. and they have different needs you know some are some hibernate some don't really tortoises yeah. hibernate yeah a lot of species of tortoises hibernate there's a lot of uh a lot of European species of tortoise that will hibernate over over the winter time and get out of the cold and everything. So really, yeah, man. See, I don't know any of this. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah, it's it's really it's really interesting, and that's why um, you know when you want one for a pet or you want to do it, just do the research. Sure, uh, there's people out there that are experts. Like I'm just a hobbyist and just somebody that loves them. Not but compared to me, you are. <laughs> <laughs> there are people that are, have the expertise and know species to species exactly what the needs are. Sure, yeah. sure. Man. Okay, so when did you, you said you've always been interested. Yeah. So when did you, like, decide, this is what I'm going to do, and then what steps did you take to create this sanctuary that you have? Because it looks like a lot of work. And it's, it's, it's a lot of work, and, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs that happen with it, you know. Of course. Um, there's, there's struggles that you have with it. Uh, even recently, uh, I'll share this, I had uh, uh, a skunk invade my yard so oh, no. you dug up a bunch of the the tortoise nests i like to just keep the eggs outside and let them uh, naturally hatch and everything i had a lot of really good results with that but he dug up a bunch of the nests and everything so ah. you know there's a lot of struggles and a lot of like almost heartbreak you feel so guilty yeah, about it and there's nothing really you could do about it generally you know like yeah it just happens so ish. yeah yeah but um yeah, you know, I think I decided I wanted to do it because I saw such a huge need for people that were uh, just releasing 
animals into the wild. Sure. You know, we see that a lot it's in a Cape Coral. It's a big problem here. Yeah, we have huge amount of, like, uh, guanas and different kinds of lizards and all these sure. common pets that people, they kind of just get away or people let them go and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and I wanted to, and the pet store at the time, probably 15 years ago I was going to a lot, people would dump them at the door. You know, they, they would tell me, the owner would tell me, oh, I came in the morning and somebody left a bunch of turtles at the front door and uh. stuff like that. Because people don't know what to do with them. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll start talking to people about taking them in. And I had... I've been working, you know, I have some money saved and I just built, you know, a, a nice little area sure. in my yard and I spent the money to do it right. And yeah, I said, you know, I want to do this. I want to, I enjoy them. You know, I like going yeah, out there, you know, so I like just hanging out with them and feeding them and, you know, made connections and different stuff like that. So sure. So what is this, the sanctuary that you have? What is it? What did you build? Like, okay, they need this for this. They need this for this. Describe yeah. the layout and what thought went into it. Okay. Um, well, I wanted to build a secure area for them to have enough uh, room to roam and go because they like to move around a lot. People don't realize that as well. They'll keep them in like, they'll think like a five by five, five foot by five foot enclosure is nice size and it's good. But these are, uh, most species are animals that travel miles sometimes and they have a huge range. Sure. So I like to give them a secure area that is big enough for them to move around and not necessarily be right up against each other all the time. Sure. They're not social animals in general. They usually just bump into each other in the wild, you yeah. know, and they'll, they'll mate or like kind of fight each other a little bit and like for territory and kind of move around. So, uh, but they don't, they're not aggressive. So you right. can keep them together, but, uh, you know, have nice housing, you know, like little places for them to go different, elements of climate uh you want to have dry uh, a dry area for them to relax and and get mm -hmm. out of the humidity and also you want a humid spot for them to go sure uh, you need shallow water dishes for them to drink tortoises another misconception tortoises drink a lot they love to drink water you really? know yeah the, sometimes people forget that because uh they think it's like this animal that kind of can just roam around like a camel and not like right i think camels probably drink a lot too i don't know that's, yeah. research, I think <laughs> that's just something people think sure uh, but yeah, you know, I wanted to put the right plants. Uh, that's a huge thing. There's a lot of toxic plants. Really? You want to eliminate any toxic plants because you don't know what they're going to eat or what not they're going to nibble right. on. So planted a lot of fruit trees and a lot of, uh, you know, hmm. stuff like that because it's, it's just interesting to have the whole environment encompassed into one thing. So you got the animals and then you got the food sources growing. Uh, you know, I grow different, different fruits that are good for uh, our climate, mangoes and guava yeah. and and, you know, just tropical fruits that I don't really have to do too much work for in the backyard. And, right. you know, they just grow and fall and the tortoises eat them. And it's like a whole process. It's you really have cool. your own little Eden. Yeah. <laughs> I that's think that's important to, to know. Like when you, you develop in the yard, you want to give them the food source, natural food source, natural water. Right. And kind of just leave them alone and as little stress as possible. You don't want to keep messing with them. Sure. Yeah. You've literally built a habitat. Yeah, it's a habitat. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, that's really, really cool. <laughs> I don't know it's anyone else who does that. And it's, it's really fun. And, it, like, the passion that you have for it shows in the work. You've yeah. created a, a habitat for these tortoises to live, like, yeah. with the exception of the skunk. It's pretty <laughs> fine, you know? Well, what happens when you develop a natural-style habitat, uh, the local wildlife wants to get in on it, too. And sure. And you got to have the, you know, just... It, it's a struggle, but, you know, it's it's just part of it. Sure. But, you know, you also get cool wildlife like birds nesting in the trees and just like... You birds know, in the trees? Yeah, you have like what? nests and, you, you know, all the little all the little things that come through the yard are fine. That's but so cool. Every once in a while you get something that wants to kind of set up shop and live there and like yeah. make it its own <laughs> home, but... Sure. You know. Man. Okay, so what is the diet of a red-footed tortoise? Uh, majority, I would think, uh, I like to feed them the majority of fruit and vegetables. Sure. Uh, I have some connection to farmers markets. You go there and say, "Hey, cool. what, you know, what are you throwing away today?" And they'll give me like boxes of like stuff that's not good to sell. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, you make some connections like that. But they love fruit. That's like their main source of food. Really? Okay. Yeah. What kind of fruit? Uh, Guava. Uh, you said mangoes. Well, those are the things that I grow. But a lot of times uh, we get a lot of bananas. We get a lot really? of yeah, a lot of uh, vegetables, whatever peppers they like. You know, sure. all kinds of peppers and stuff like that. But. Uh, they're super into stuff that's, like, rotting. Sure, <laughs> They're yeah. They're really attracted to that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. I love that you have a tortoise farm in your backyard. Yeah, it's, it's really It's like cool. a farm. Like, yeah. you have livestock, and then you feed them, and yeah. that's, they have their own little area. It's so cool. And I think that, you know, just like 
even when we talk about the skunk gets in there, you know, sometimes you in your hobby you get kind of discouraging. Like, oh, I just want, I'm going to give up. But like, I've I, in my head, I like, and I've even spoken to other people that do this. I'm like, hey, I'm just going to bring everything to your house. And yeah. like, <laughs> and like, because you get so, so discouraged. But you got to, you got to rethink it. You know, don't make sure. any decisions based on your, your emotions, you know, sure. kind of let it seek in a little bit. And it's like, like any farmer. When you, yeah. a fox gets in the hen house, you yeah, know, you coyotes tear up your sheep. Like, it's, that's life. Yeah. You know, it just happens that way. So, wow. Okay. So how long have you had this particular habitat? Well, it's been a couple it, years, right? Yeah, it's been working on it. Uh, uh, fortunate enough to become a home on, homeowner like five years ago. Congrats. Yeah, thank you very it's much. It's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that was like the first thing. I got my home, and I'm like, okay, I put the fence up. I put a nice, you know, uh, vinyl fence. That way nothing could get in or out, really. Sure. Uh, so, you know, some things dig under or whatever. It happens. The cats yeah, yeah. jump over the fence and yeah. like, they're in the yard sometimes, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, that was the first step. And then, you know, kind of compartmentalized the backyard a little bit and, mm -hmm. you know, started planting some plants and stuff like that. So, you know, that that was a big part of it. Gotcha. So it's the second you got a house, you're like, all right, it's game oh, yeah. time. Before I even moved in, I was yeah. like, I've hired the fence guy. I'm like, that's, I need the fence. So that like, is that's, awesome. Yeah. I'm the same way when, like, I don't own a home yet. But when I do, I'm obsessed with pugs. <laughs> like, obsessed with pugs. Yeah. And I've told my fiance, I was like, listen, we buy a house. Before we even buy furniture... I'm buying a pug. Yeah. It's the first thing I'm buying. That's awesome. So I can, I can relate. Yeah. I so. enjoyed the pug. I, I saw the, the the fan movie that you were in. I oh. watched that earlier. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this little pug. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, pugs. I love pugs, too. Dude, I'm obsessed. <laughs> like, it's unhealthy. Yeah. <laughs> I follow way too many accounts on Instagram that are just, I, I'm not joking, probably 20. I follow You're, 20 accounts that are just pugs. Do you follow Doug the Pug? Of That's course I do. That's the number one oh pug. Oh, my God. <laughs> the best. Chubbs, rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> No, dude, I'm obsessed with bugs. <laughs> <laughs> so when you when you created this habitat, obviously breeding was a thing. You yeah, had, you had to take into account. Yeah, how often do they lay eggs? Is it once a year? Uh, they'll lay. Are they just kind of pop the, when it happens? They'll they'll nest and it, it's called a clutch of eggs. So they'll they'll lay a clutch of eggs, probably two, three, or four times per year, mm -hmm. all within the same season. Okay. So uh, they all lay. I don't necessarily. I'm not a breeder, but right. I don't discourage it. I have I have both male and female. <laughs> you don't tortoise. like when yeah. they're mating, just kick them. Yeah, I don't I don't separate the males from the female. I just let it happen naturally, and you know, sure. and I don't like I say, I ground incubate that. I just leave the eggs outside to incubate naturally. You know, we have a very similar As climate. As it would have happened yeah. in yeah. And nature. Yeah, and uh, give away babies. You know, like I don't I don't like to sell them. I don't like to do that really sure. necessarily uh, i'd rather have somebody invest that money into buying the right equipment and the right kind of enclosure and stuff like that sure sure okay so you said a couple times a year on average how many eggs do they lay do you know um per year Obviously. i would say between uh probably between eight and okay. maybe up to like 20 depending on how big the female is how old it is and stuff like that yeah. gotcha Some it's not like a sea turtle where they just dump no eggs. no <laughs> see, yeah sea turtles <laughs> usually dump like hundreds of eggs at yeah, a time yeah. but uh this species will lay about between four to like eight eggs per clutch and they'll uh -huh. do that two or three times a year and what's the survival rate of an egg typically uh, if they're all fertilized uh Probably, I would say about 80, 90 percent are really. Yeah, yeah. They, sometimes you get uh, hatchlings that you just could tell that aren't. They're not as hardy. They're not as you know energetic as the other ones, and sometimes they won't make it. Sure. But uh, I think that if you protect the nest, you know, you, you take out the the predator factor. Sure. Mostly all of them will hatch. Do you have to compensate more so when there's babies, like? new uh like when there's newborns do you have to change anything about the habitat or is it like because it's nature it's already it's preset? uh you know just a downsized similar habitat just a downsized gotcha. way you know just uh make sure they're drinking their water it, it becomes a uh, issue of making sure that the dish water dish is safe for them to get in and out of right and, uh, make you don't sure want to come back yeah. and just have a bunch of drowned tortoises that'd be horrible yeah the, you know that that's a that's a thing too you know they can't really climb they're not super strong and they're right they're just little they they like to hide. Uh, like the first year, they just really? yeah they just disappear and you don't want to see them. You don't want to mess with them and stress them out. You don't want to take them out and hold them or anything. You just look, kind of leave them be and make sure they're eating, and make sure they're drinking and stuff like that. Gotcha. And they usually do really well. Gotcha. What is the life expectancy of a red-footed tortoise? I I believe red-footed tortoises could live up over a hundred years. Jeez. I think there's some on record about eighty or something years old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the records go back way back. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. they could track a lot of these other tortoises, like the Galapagos tortoises were super popular in the Hundreds, 1900s and yeah. stuff. So they, they could see how long they live. So sure. uh, I think in captivity, 
yeah, you could expect, you know, to pass it down like yeah, you were yeah. talking about earlier, you know, so. Man. So when are you going to go to the Galapagos Islands? I want to go, man. I mean, you have to. Yeah. Right? You it's have to. It's almost like uh, it's something that It's like needs a bucket list thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so it c- can't be that hard. I think you that gotta get is a passport, right? Is it actually? Is it protected? Like you have to? Yeah, it's a very, uh, very protected area. You can't touch anything when you go. You know, you could, you probably uh, all guided. You know, you can't just go off on your own and explore and everything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm not really sure how hard it would be to go there, but I know it's a popular destination for people to kind of go through and check out. And sure, I know that they've had a lot of good results out there with uh, protecting the the tortoises and sure. all the wildlife and everything. They had a huge problem with rats, and they developed some kind of program where they eliminated the rats from the islands really? and stuff. Yeah, so they were having a big problem with that. Huh? Oh yeah, because rats obviously eat the eggs. Yeah, they eat the like eggs and the babies and everything too. So yeah. gotcha. Okay. Have you ever seen a sea turtle in the wild? No, that's another bucket list. I, 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 I want to see sea turtles hatch. Like, I want to see Wouldn't the nest. Cool? Yeah, I think it's not. I see it online all the time. So it's not like one of these things where. It's not it, a hidden secret. Yeah, it's not something that just happens. Like, you have to be there. I think that they know. Like, because it's a big protection issue. You know, you go out to Sanibel and uh, people actually, you know, they guard them and they have the. They put cages around them. And, yeah. you know, they put signs up. Like, don't mess around over here. You know, it's protected by the law and everything. So. I think yeah. they kind of gauge how long it'll take and when these hatchings are going to happen. Sure. I've always wanted to do that. And yeah. then someone told me about, like, the horror that it could be. Yeah. It's like when they're going down into the water, like, seagulls picking them up and, like, yeah, foxes yeah. come out of nowhere. Yep. I was like, just get a 22. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> the, every one of these babies is making it to the yeah. water. <laughs> well, you know, growing up, I would always watch wildlife programs and, you know, oh, Steve yeah. Irwin and Crocodile Hunter and stuff. And they would say, you know, they would show the pictures of, like, the birds swooping down and they say, listen, we don't – necessarily mess with that because it's all part of the na- natural course of things and like sure you know it kind of helped me understand as a kid like if I had the same ideas you're like no I would be yeah, like exactly. throwing them in the water and <laughs> like chewing the birds away just, and just everything just punching but seagulls yeah I think that when you start you know appreciating nature and you start appreciating wildlife sure uh, you have to come to terms with that's you know that's part of nature that's part Nature's of that's hardcore yeah, man it is and you know unfortunately it's the the babies and the the weaker yeah. Parts of the herds that get that get picked off by the predators and stuff, and it's it's too it's too much for me. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot to watch, but it's it's really interesting, and it really helps uh, build an appreciation for wildlife. And I think that anyone that wants to keep like we're talking about keeping exotic pets and everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say develop a, a real appreciation for wildlife because these are you know even they're super docile and they're easy to keep. These are wild animals and. They need to be treated with a uh, certain amount of, you know, respect and dignity as far as keeping them in captivity, too, you know. Like sure. It's not something you want to just have to have and then forget like a lot of yeah. people do. And then it's too big and you're like, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. I mean, the Everglades, like, is ruined because of people doing that with pythons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pythons and the it's monitor lizards, all that terrifying. stuff. terrifying. Yeah. I don't do snakes, man. No. I'm terrified of snakes. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I saw one kill my cat when I was, like, 12. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. No, I'm good. Snakes yeah. are not for me. There are people that love snakes, and they yeah. They I'm not friends with those people. They do all. <laughs> yeah, I'm not either. I think there's a, a very like primal part of a human that's yeah. like, no, snake is dangerous. Like, I'm gonna leave it alone. Yeah, and, it's like way I, back to like forever. Yeah, humans. Are, nobody likes snakes. Yeah, just <laughs> you know, treat them with respect. And you know, see a snake. The snake doesn't want to bite you. It doesn't want to go after you. You know, you see a snake, just get out, get, get away. I, I, <laughs> Don't I mess into, with it. I turn into a girl, man. I jump. Man. I would I would <laughs> wrestle an alligator before I got into a room with a cobra. Yeah. Like if a king cobra comes near me, I'm gonna shoot myself because it's not <laughs> it's not getting me. You know, like <laughs> I, I react. You ever see the the videos on YouTube where they put the cucumbers by the cat and the cat just? Oh yes. Fl- that's yeah. my reaction when I see this thing. I just fly into the air and I run away. I had something <laughs> like that is that was my literal <laughs> response. Yeah. So I was at this was a few years ago. I was at a junkyard with my dad, and we were getting this part out of this car. And um, we there's this like line of cars, and my dad's telling me to check each one to see if I can find this part. I go to the end, I don't find it, and on my way back, I'm just walking. Luckily, I got boots on at the time. Yeah. And as I'm walking, I notice something in between my legs, and it was a rattlesnake. Oh wow! Yeah. And I was like, Ooh! and jumped up like onto the under the car next to me. I'm like, it's right there. <laughs> Terrifying, yeah, terrifying. And then I was like, I'm not working anymore. Dad, this is on you. I'm yeah. going to stare at this snake so it doesn't catch up on me. And then as we're leaving, my dad was like, have you ever heard like a rattlesnake like a rattle in real life? I was like, no, I don't think I have. Only in movies and stuff. And he's like, does your phone record video? <laughs> I was like, yeah, why? He goes, just start recording. And as we're leaving, he takes his two by four and chucks it near <laughs> the rattlesnake. 
and it freaks out yeah. and starts rattling. Have you ever heard a rattlesnake? Like oh, in your yeah. life? It's so loud. Yeah, it's really and loud. And I know it like from twenty feet away, I could hear it like it was right next to my ear. And I was like, that is horrifying. It is. But you know, on the other hand, it's also really nice of the snake to yeah, do exactly. that for you. It's like, okay, here I am. You know, like <laughs> don't step on me, don't touch me. Yeah. I'm gonna bite you. Yeah, no, God. <laughs> Don't do snakes, man. So it's very considerate of the snake yeah, to make all that noise <laughs> yeah, and let you know I about it. I appreciate having an alarm. <laughs> Some snakes <laughs> will just sneak up on you and they'll like crawl yeah. up your leg or something. No thanks. No <laughs> thanks. Hard pass. Tortoises are great. Yeah. <laughs> man, this is this is very very interesting. Yeah, I've never seen a sea turtle as well. I've never seen a hatching, but it feels it's got to be cool. Oh yeah, I cool. think Galapagos so. Galapagos has got to be cool to see something that massive. Yeah. You know, man. It's pretty cool. So how did you, and I know this was like a serious concern when the hurricane hit us. Yeah. What did you do? How did you handle oh, that? Because I can't imagine the stress levels given so the passion for what you've done already. Yeah, you know, I, I tried to be, the, you know, the tough guy in the hurricane. I'm not going anywhere. I'm yeah, exactly. hunkering down. <laughs> I'm not leaving. Out. <laughs> yeah, I got my dog. I got my, my tortoises. I got my, my stock of water and food. I'm not moving. <laughs> and, then, you know, I felt good about it for a while. And then... Uh, the police came up and down the road and they were blasting the siren and one guy was hanging out the window with a bullhorn saying you need to get out now because this evacuation yeah. and i happened to live in an area where they were forecasting a tremendous amount of storm surge same yeah like and 15 feet where i was yeah and i i was supposed to yeah i was supposed to and, it, and you know fortunately this didn't happen or anything yeah, but for real they uh said get out now this is you know kind of last chance to get out and my house was going to be where my family came and i have a young nephew and everything and yeah, yeah. we were going to just kind of you know, ride it out there and we decided to go to a different place where we would be more safe according sure. to uh, the forecast which right. didn't turn out to be the case because we went to lehigh and lehigh was like destroyed on yeah the underwater <laughs> just water everywhere but uh to prepare uh i you know really just hope for the best and i uh i have several uh, large watering troughs for like where you would give horses water and they're mm -hmm. fairly large and i set them up on tables in my garage and i put them inside those troughs yeah, yeah so they were waterproof and they were probably about uh eight foot off the ground cool and cool. i was like oh man the worst case scenario I'll come back and the water is flooded up it's not going to get you know from the street into the house and up another six feet into where they're at so right and tortoises are really resilient and they would be able if i wouldn't be able to get home for a week or so they would be okay you know right. and because uh, i just know what i was working with and what i was dealing with and i said this is just the best i could do and there's nothing else i could do and uh Actually, <laughs> I threw a bunch of the babies in like a little case, and I brought them with me. I'm like, I got these go. guys. Like, I'm gonna take care of make sure <laughs> this no matter is the what, future. Yeah, at least I got these guys with me, and I, I did that. And uh, fortunately, I came back, and everything was fine. My neighbor was good. I didn't even lose power, and uh, it was cool. just like a lot of debris and stuff. But uh, sure, it worked out okay. But have a plan, you know. That that was sure. my plan was to hunker down and stay, and I had a plan B, which worked fine and would have been okay, I think. Right. But who knows, you know? How many tortoises did you have at that time? At the time, I had uh, the I probably had about thirty, but uh, fifteen of them were, were were babies that I still had. Gotcha. So okay. they were easy to kind of just throw into a little uh, <laughs> stick them in your pocket. Yeah, a little box. Bunch of little just, golf yeah. balls. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Man, I didn't know any of this stuff. <laughs> I I love learning. Learning's yeah. Like uh, Monique and I, my fiance, we went to Haiti on a cruise yeah. last year. No, two years ago, something like that. I'm horrible at time. I'll be like, you know, Phil Bliss. Like, we just saw each other like three years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, was like way more than that. <laughs> uh, and we did this. It's called Labadee, which is this place that, like, Royal Caribbean works with, and then the village and whatever. But we went on this, like, historical walk, they call it. And he's just like, this building did this and this and this. And I just love learning about things. Yeah. And I've learned so much about tortoises just now <laughs> and I, i've always loved tortoises so this is really really interesting stuff yeah it's really cool I, and thank you for letting me talk about it a little bit of it's course. great to talk about tortoises of then. course but uh you uh, apart from you know doing that kind of amazing stuff you lost half your body weight yeah that is serious work man yeah it was what 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 led you to make that change well uh you know I grew up always big, always, sure. you know, fat kid in class, and, you know, you, you develop all these kind of defense mechanisms. You become the class clown, and you kind of own it or whatever, and uh, kind of grew up that way my whole life, and I was always overweight, and it really came to a head, you know, dealing with a lot of personal issues and, and you know, really get become hard on yourself, and what happens is, you know, I was putting on even more weight as an adult, you know, like in my 20s, and I was just like... Sure. It came to the point, like, oh, man, it's just like... I don't know what to do anymore. Like I, I tried mm -hmm. to work out. I couldn't physically work out. I had a lot of health issues and it all came to a head. And, uh, 
I was having trouble breathing one day. I was just sitting at home. I was like, really? Oh my god, I can't breathe. Like I, I like I'm not. It's, it's not bad. coming back. You know, like yeah, yeah. And then I had you know a lot of anxiety about that. Uh, eventually, I was feeling okay, and then the next day it happened again. And it's like within yeah. like eight hours later, I'm like, I can't breathe. It's not working. And I went to the emergency room. And I don't go to the emergency room. I'm like, terrified Same. to go to the doctor. Emergency Same. Room. <laughs> Same. Unless I know I'm dying, I'm not going anywhere. And uh, <laughs> that's how I was. I was like, I am dying. <laughs> I think I think like something really wrong is happening. And, sure. Uh, I went there and they did all all the blood work and all the all the crazy tests and everything. And I was there overnight. And uh, basically what had happened was uh, I had a thing called tachycardia, which was my heart rate was always elevated. So a normal to person. Compensate, yeah, I'm and, yeah. Normal heart rate for adult resting probably between like 60 and like 70 ish. Uh, my heart rate in the hospital bed was 110 120 ish and the doctor said listen you know we've given you uh some medicine you're still in bed uh you're resting you're not active at all and your heart rate cannot go lower than 120 you can't leave so Mm. i'm terrified man i don't know what's gonna happen i'm going crazy uh you know talk to the doctors and i left the emergency room the next day just because i was so i was so scared of what was going on sure you know i should have stayed there as long as they said and i should have listened to them but i didn't you know and i just left understand uh, i saw uh another medical uh doctor like a walk-in place i went to because you know like most people self-employed I don't have insurance and yeah and for very real. terrifying in that respect too and he are uh yeah yeah, yeah so that's that you. was a huge bill uh and they prescribed me a uh, medication called the uh, beta blockers and that artificially lowered my heart rate. It mm-hmm. was still very high. And I was just like, I have to do something, whatever it is sure. to preserve my life. Because you know what? In sometimes things happen and you, you know, you enter into the hospital and I've had family members and friends, they go in and you just, that's it. And sure. they just never leave again. And it's terrifying and it's heartbreaking. And yeah, I kind of just, in in that night in the hospital i just like i kind of you know i, I did a lot of praying <laughs> yeah of course of course <laughs> and i made a lot of deals you know yeah. like, you <laughs> kinda, i guess that's what people go through when they're facing those things like you're terrible, you don't know what else to do you're desperate and i just said you know i'm i had this peace over me and i said i'm gonna just do whatever i have to do i'm gonna kind of accept what's happening because this is of my own th- design you know i did this to myself and i knew that sure it wasn't like some tragic accident or some surprise that this was happening you know sure uh and you kind of think like i i i had these ideas like you know big deal life is like big deal if i if i die big deal like that's sure. like living life up to that point point. and yeah, then yeah. you're faced with that and the doctor you know you see an emergency room doctor looking and like we're really scared for what's happening here and we don't know what's going to happen so you kind of like, like, oh, it's a big deal. Yeah, this is a big <laughs> deal, and I don't want to die. And yeah. I kind of had that realization, and that kind of made me turn a corner in life. Sure. Uh, and I just went through that, and I went through the process of just doing whatever I could do. And the best advice I got was from a uh, nurse practitioner, practitioner that I went to go see that prescribed me the medicine, did my blood work, was mm-hmm. monitoring me. And she just told me, said, you need to just go walk. Just walk. And don't worry about anything else. Just walk around the block, walk around, do whatever you could do because yeah. that's going to help you lose the weight. And that's what I started doing for a year. All I would do is walk. Really? Yeah, just walk around the neighborhood, and I started losing weight gradually. And, you know, bef- it took about six, eight months, and my blood pressure and my um, my heart rate returned to a normal heart rate again. And, you know, uh, my sure. body healed from whatever was going on because I started losing the weight. And, uh you know, I dieted and I ate right and I cooked my own meals and stuff like that. And sure, the process was um, intimidating because it's absolutely you don't necessarily see the end result. But just like anybody that is passionate about, I became passionate about living again. You know, I yeah, became yeah. passionate about doing something good for myself. Yeah, I didn't talk to anybody about it for like a whole year. I just wanted to do it because this is something that I wanted to do for myself and i know that a lot of people are the same way Uh, um it doesn't matter how big when you're passionate about music it doesn't matter how big the audience is that you're playing for when you're passionate about you know speaking it doesn't matter how big the audience is you know it's just like i was passionate about doing this and it didn't matter who knew like some friends and family knew and i was doing this because i was passionate about it and i wanted to do it 
and I, I got results, you know, slow and steady. Yeah, yeah, you did. So uh, whenever uh, I talk to anybody who does fitness or anything like that, it's like it's super intimidating, not only for the, the fact of what it is, but also it's like, okay, they put on their lab coats, and it's like, here's the deal. There's carbs. There's bad carbs. Yeah. And it's like a science. So yeah. when you start walking, right, so you, you just start walking in a little bit, did you have to do, obviously, like a ton of research? Like, what, what road did you take from just walking? Like, so like I'm gonna, did it just naturally snowball? It, it did naturally snowball. Uh, there was a combination of, like I said earlier, uh, I was fat my whole life, like right. overweight, obese my whole life. So I knew about things. Right. And what I knew about, like, cutting carbs, like, no carb diets and don't eat bread and cut out the sugar and, you know, eat that kind of way. Sure. And I just, I just applied what I had already known in a way that I didn't do it before where I was adamant about doing it. Right. And it became something, and it's a cliche to say, became my lifestyle. Sure. You know, you well, can't diet. You got to, you know, change your lifestyle. And it just became... Uh, a way of saying I'm going to accept this way of eating yeah, and yeah. I'm just going to just do this forever and not even think about it anymore. Yeah, this yeah. is just what I have to do to do what I need to do to lose the weight and be healthy. I didn't, I didn't have any of these like huge ambitions of losing over 200 pounds. Right. I just <laughs> wanted to get to the point where I wasn't going to die. Sure. And, you know, like I don't really talk about it a whole lot, but I, the breathing issues and the, the heart palpitations, all those things were happening for months after I was on medicine and you know, they right. were still happening. You, you know, you just sit there and you're scared and you don't know what to do. Yeah. But you do whatever you need to do to get where you need to get. Man. You know what's crazy about that as well is it started with responsibility. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, man, that's a real serious thing just as far as like an attribute to your character. And yeah. the, the first thing you didn't try to blame it on anything, you were like, okay, this is what it is. Yeah. You take responsibility and from that you can walk out of it. Well, yeah. work out of it. <laughs> well, actually, literally walk yeah, out. Yeah, walk right, <laughs> walk, walk, walk away out of it, man. It's man, a path. that's bonkers. So, when also when I talk to people that go to the gym and stuff, it's so confusing. They're like ten sets of three, sets of five. Yeah. Like, what What exercises were you doing that you started? Like, what is what is your regimen as far as workout specific? Workouts. Are you lifting weights? I see you do yeah. the stairmaster a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So you know, uh, it does change after time. You know. Okay. You, you know, walking is great, and it's a great physical activity, and exercise is, is a wonderful thing for anybody at any health level. Of course. Uh, it did snowball, and it did take some time to kind of get acclimated to doing different things, especially going to the gym. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt good. Like, I had lost, like, 50 or 60 pounds, and I went to the gym, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to lift weights. I'm going to do, yeah. do all this <laughs> stuff. And I went in there, and I worked out for about 15 minutes, and I literally, in my phone, had 9-1 pressed into the thing, and I sat down. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what's going <laughs> to Like, I, I thought I was going to pass out out you know like really like i was i was at that back to that place of fear again like yeah, yeah. what is going on <laughs> yeah i felt I was, I was feeling so good and confident uh so i took my time and i continued to do what i knew to do and i i had some more results with that and losing the weight mm -hmm. and then i went to the gym and uh i i went back and i said i'm gonna do this i'm gonna work on this uh slow and steady and I did like, you know, like you said, everybody has a little bit of knowledge about what, you know, all oh, the, the sets and what to do and yeah. what muscle groups and uh, big shout out to uh, Planet Fitness, man, because Planet I Fitness. love that place. Yeah. <laughs> they have uh, every Planet Fitness has this little area in the back called the 30 minute workout. OK, really? and it's it, all you have to do is go in there and it has exactly what you need to do. And really, yeah, it integrates uh, weights and also cardio like you uh, you'll go on the little step. And it's not a machine or anything. It's just literally like a block on the floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I've seen that. Like the yeah. Jack Johnson. Yeah, you just step up. You <laughs> yeah, one, yeah. two, three, four. You step up for a minute, and then you do a, a weight machine. Okay. And you lift some weights, and then you go back and forth, and you're done with the whole thing in 30 minutes. Really? So I did that. I did, I did that for this. several months, mm -hmm. and I started building my confidence, and I started learning about, you know, lifting weights. And now my regime is I, I do about an hour of cardio on one of the machines per day. Okay. I still walk a lot. I love to walk. It's like something I really enjoy. A lot sure. of peace. And, you know, I throw on a podcast or I throw on some YouTube videos and I walk around my neighborhood and stuff. Yeah. I really enjoy that. And, and I lift weights pretty adamantly. I, I enjoy it. So, I, you know, kind of uh, go full circle and, and, and like take it to a whole nother level. You know, you lose the weight. Now I'm, I, I purposely try to like gain some weight and lift weights. And, and sure. Which is weird. You know, yeah. it's <laughs> super weird to do that. And you got to kind of get out of your own head about it because you, you focus so much on the scale. And right. It the number. Like, yeah. But um, yeah, just take some time and, you know, 
the best thing, if you want to learn something, always talk to people that know more than you. Don't yeah, be yeah. intimidated. <laughs> I, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, if you're in the gym and you want to lift weights, go find the biggest jack dude in the gym and be like, hey, man, can you show me if I'm doing this right? Or at least tell me, like, what to do. Or, yeah, you don't want to hurt yourself. Yeah, and you, it's, you don't want to get advice from everybody in the world. But if somebody's doing something that you want to do, sure, have some interaction with them. Talk to them. Get some input. And nine times out of ten, people want to help. Right, right. Yeah, Th that's cool. I didn't know about that thirty-minute workout thing. That's smart yeah. for yeah. them to be like, "Hey, anyone that's got a half an hour and don't know yeah. what to do, here's a checklist. Knock this out." Yeah, I highly recommend it. If anybody's listening and they're thinking about hitting the gym, go check out Planet Fitness. It, yeah, they're really it, inexpensive, and it's really a great place. I'm not endorsed by them, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they. That's where I've been. Uh, that's been my workout gym for the last three years, and. We need to I'm get you endorsed by them. Yeah, hey, Planet I mean, Fitness. You lost here. hundreds of pounds. I did lose. I've, I've lost uh, 100. And this is another crazy thing a lot of people uh, need to understand, too, that your body reacts to exercise and it reacts to your diet. If you get it right, I lost 160 pounds the first year. Sheesh. I don't even weigh 160. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it's crazy to think about. Man. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. That's more, than, like you said, mo more than most people weigh. And it's That's just crazy. And I don't take a lot. Like I say that so that people understand that they can do it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, I don't take any pride in the amount of weight I lost. I you know I talk about it a lot. I'm sure. proud of the fact that I did it and that I could use As it to help other be. people. It's yeah, a, I, it's, I know. It like pride in accomplishment. Yeah. You know, and I like you. You should be very proud of yeah. what you've done. I tell, I, I try to tell people that, and I, I understand that, you know, like yeah, I feel course. it too, and I, <laughs> I you know, like I just, but it, it's, it's almost like uh, stereotypical, you know, you're, when you're big and you're fat your whole life and overweight your whole life, you, you're very insecure and you're very you don't have a lot of confidence and everything. Yeah, of so course. So people are like, oh, it's a big deal, blah, blah, you know, like oh, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and like legitimately i tell people that you know i lost that amount of weight but you know what i put that amount of weight on too you know i did that to myself sure. and i That's i'm fair. just kind of backtracking all the wrong things that i did to my body and okay. now i, I kind of have like a platform to move forward now like yeah, yeah yeah sometimes when you mess up a lot you got to get back to where you started from to figure it out and then you can move forward from that so you got to backtrack to go forward and sure. i think i think when we understand that and you could apply that to a lot of different problems. Yeah, yeah. You know, just I was just about to say yeah, that don't, that don't, mindset translates to everything. Yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to take a big step back or two. Sure. So that you could move forward in the future. I, and I think that'll help a lot of people too. It helped me a lot to understand that. Yeah, yeah. I one of my favorite quotes from Carrie Fisher ever yeah. it says, Be afraid, but do it anyway. Yeah. You know, and Absolutely. That's, that's crazy. I love that I love that it started with responsibility, because that's nuts. Because yeah. nobody addresses that part of it. It's like you literally took responsibility and then made it happen through hard work and yeah. you didn't give up what what did you do on days when you wanted to because there's no way you didn't have days well <laughs> yeah you know listen you know even to this day there's days where i just want to you know throw in the towel and just be like i give up on every <laughs> yeah, yeah it's <laughs> a lot think, of work yeah we go people go through that and like absolutely yeah no matter what you're doing and sometimes it becomes so tedious and you have whatever setbacks or whatever and you just kind of want to give up and but i always feel like bigger picture kind of thing like hope hope is hope is a word that i hold near and dear to my yeah, heart hope is incredibly important so even though it doesn't look like what you want it to look like mm -hmm. even though things and situations aren't exactly how you want them to be sure hope means that it's possible that they can get to that point where things are what they need to be Sure. So you have hope in yourself, and if you start there and, and believe in yourself and believe that you can accomplish what you set out to accomplish, sure, you can persevere through all the all the shortcomings and all the times where it just hurts too much, or you, you want to give up, or you want to eat like other people eat, or not care about it anymore, or not think about it anymore. Right. But the you get that get that inspiration of hope in your heart that like what you're doing is gonna help you. And right. the greatest the greatest achievement that you could possibly do is is use the things that help you to help somebody else. Absolutely. So pass that's, on what you have learned. That's what I'm talking about, the bigger picture kind of thing. Like, yeah, it's great that I did it for me. Right. But now I want to help other people do it too. And I you know, I became a personal trainer, went through the courses and I did yeah. all that. Yeah. How's that been? It's been cool. You know, it's um I, I'm, I'm a business owner already, so I haven't right had on. a chance to really jump into that. But I sit down with friends. I sit down with family members. We talk about it. And I sure I, I interact with people that normally wouldn't, 
you know, talk to me about it and it kind of gives them a way to feel more comfortable talking about their obesity when they talk to somebody that's actually gone through it. Sure. Uh, right now, that's the stage I'm at. Uh, cool. Having like kind of one on one conversations or maybe just like a quick walkthrough in the gym about stuff. One day, I really like to work closely with people that are struggling with their weight and right. really walk that journey with them and whatever that looks like. Uh, it's just out there in like the imagination sphere yeah, 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 of things, yeah, but yeah, of course. I know it's going to happen one day. That's where everything starts, man. Yeah, I know it's going to happen one day, and making small steps towards that. And it's like we said before, like a musician will play in front of a crowd of like four people, and like if they're passionate about it, they love it. Yeah. So I don't care, you know, what it looks like. If it, right now all it is is talking about it here and there, or posting about it online, or yeah, you absolutely. know, posting a picture on Instagram, or you know, hanging out with somebody in the gym, whatever it looks like. I'm into it, man, and I, I really, I really love that, and hopefully, could help people step out of that. That's that, so cool. Yeah, those things that hold them back for so long. It's yeah. just like it's like, but as we talk about it, I lost 160 pounds in one year. One year. That is crazy. It doesn't take forever to come out of what's holding you back. You know, if if being obese is holding you back from living a good life and being happy, right? Take that one year. The time is going to go by anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take that one year and set it aside, and you're going to see a, a tremendous amount of results if you stick to it and you have the perseverance to do it. Yeah. No, see, that's also amazing is because people that I'm, I'm typically, you know, that lose a ton of weight, it's not your amount of weight. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's usually like if people are saying they're having a really hard time losing 50, 60 pounds, mm -hmm. and then they're trying to talk to somebody else who lost 10 or 15, yeah. they don't necessarily take that person into account. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I understand. I have to lose 60. You lost 10. Yeah. And you're like, no, no, no I lost you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, then to, and then to have the, the character, for lack of a better term, to want to pass that on to other people who felt the same way, that is incredible. Yeah. Dude, good on you for that. Appreciate it, man. And, uh, and now you're a personal trainer. What, yeah. what goes into that? What is that course? Because I know uh, nothing about it. Surprisingly easy. Yeah? I was shocked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to be honest, uh, it was uh, there was an option to do it online. I said, no, it's not good enough. I want to do a personal course. Right. So I went to a class. Uh, it was like every Saturday for three months, I think. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It was like all day thing. And then you go to the gym and it was probably about two hours per course. Mm -hmm. And then you take an examination at the end. You do a, a walkthrough with the gym with a trainer, uh, the examiner, the sure. person that does the, exa the, the testing. And you go uh, do a written test. And then you, they send it in. You get your results in the mail, and like they send you a That's certificate. That's legit, man. Yeah, it's it's legit, but um, it's really just something anybody could do. Sure. And you just got to be, you know, intelligent enough to pass a test. Sure. So sure. I, I know I feel like I always felt like the combination of uh, education and experience is the key to a success sure. in in helping somebody walk that journey. Absolutely. Because I had all the experience. I was like, well, I don't. Well, it worked for me. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for everybody else. Right, right. And it's, that's true. It's a very true. specific skill to teach. Yeah. And so you got to have the right education to yeah. pass it on correctly. Yeah, I think there's uh, parameters in that, and you kind of have to bounce around and be a little bit flexible as to yeah, what works for other people. But, yeah, I, I felt like that was something important to do and get the get the little certificate. And, you know, sure. so it, it means something. And it, it, it means helps. a lot. Yeah. That's so cool. This is great, man. <laughs> man, I had no idea. I had no idea. So what was the, what was the total number you, you lost? Uh, Two hundred and um, twenty three pounds Sheesh. was the most. And, and like I was saying earlier, uh, I'm, I'm focusing a lot on you know building up my body and building up my muscle because sure. that's something I didn't do. Well, maybe like six months I started actually living, lifting weights and doing stuff like that. Sure. Uh, so I've been doing that, and you got to eat a lot, and you got to change the way you eat and yeah. learn different ways. So it's incredible. Uh, <laughs> To go from the mess of weight loss, and uh, right now I, I purposely gained 20 pounds. Yeah, yeah. And then later on we lose it again. You know, you go through that cycle, right? And, and that's all part of it and everything. So. And you started meal prepping. How's that been yeah. going? Meal prepping is fun. You know, I, I enjoy cooking. So you know, you go, you know, get some good ingredients and and cook a bunch of meals. And yeah. yeah. I, if you meal prep out there, just I hope you like eating the same thing every day because <laughs> 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 that's pretty much how it is. You got to be pretty dedicated to eat. The same meal every day sure. for dinner. Oh, God. <laughs> How often do you eat? I, I just eat... Uh, oh, wow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like to eat... I like to eat uh, 
two two big meals a day. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You know, there's different strategies and different way people people. Some people say it doesn't matter. Some people, uh, you know, swear by it. But uh, it's called intermittent fasting. It's where you eat all your food in like a block, like, okay. like six or eight hours throughout the day. And then after that, you don't eat anymore. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So you know, and it works for you. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy cool. it. I think it's it's a good way to eat. Do you have a cheat day or no cheat days? I, when I was losing my weight, I was adamant. Never. I'm never cheating. I didn't cheat, and I didn't for two years. I didn't eat anything I wasn't supposed to eat. Really? Yeah. Uh, now now I'm I'm super, like, I don't want to say super flexible, but yeah, I'm yeah. a lot more flexible about what I eat, and it's not a big deal. I, I, sure. You know, with the amount of activity I do and the level that I'm at uh, physically, Sure. I could eat a little bit extra, or I could eat at a restaurant out and eat whatever, you know, and eat like normal. Right, right. Quote unquote normal food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which you know, when, when you spend a couple of years uh, really uh, paying attention to what you eat, yeah, sometimes yeah. you you don't want to eat at a restaurant. Sometimes you don't want to eat junk sure. or like a pizza, fast food, or any of these things. That like, sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> You lose your taste for a lot of things too. Sure, I can yeah. imagine. And you just recently, correct me if I'm wrong, you you took the vegan boat. Yes. Yeah. How's that been? It's been really good. I yeah. really, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, you know, it goes back to what we talked about earlier. I really have a deep uh, appreciation for wildlife and animals in general. Yeah, of course. It's something that I always wanted to do, and I was too insecure about doing it. Like, yeah, yeah. So big, like I, I was so like overweight. It just it was like it didn't connect for me until I got to the weight that I wanted to be. I'm like, I'm gonna try this. Yeah. yeah. And funny enough, I gained like a ton of weight when I started. Did eating you? Meat. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> what is going on? And then I kind of had to like adjust some things. Put the brakes. Yeah. <laughs> I had to pull back a little bit and like really pay attention again to what I was eating. And it was it's a good experience, and you learn a lot about uh, doing that. So I've been vegan for close to a year, but yeah. before that, I did about nine months of being vegetarian. Gotcha. So I transitioned out of that and from the ketosis diet, you know, for people that know about these things, uh, mm. that's how I lost my weight. I don't claim vegan lifestyle or diet helped me lose the weight. Right. Uh, it was all through a low carb ketosis diet where it's a lot of meat and vegetables. Really? And okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And then you went from that to vegetarian. Yeah. And that was like straight up just vegetables. Uh, vegetables, vegetarian, vegetables, eggs. Cheese, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Gotcha. No yeah. meat, uh, fish. No, I, I cut the fish out gradually. I you know I took gradual steps and I would do like three or four vegetarian meals per week, mm -hmm. and then eventually I was like, oh, I could just do that every day. Yeah, yeah. And then it just became like a habit. I'm like, okay, well, I'll just be vegetarian. Right. And then eventually I was like, well, educating myself and not really feeling comfortable about how how things are produced and like you guys could, I'm not going to get into that whole thing now, but yeah, of course, please, you know, please do some research. If you're interested, go online and be prepared for what you're going to see, because it's going to hurt you. Yeah. That is. <laughs> but, uh, seeing those things and seeing how a lot of, uh, meat and dairy and eggs are produced. I just, I was like, Oh, it's not that big of a deal for me to just cut that out too. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so, and then, so that is that. Fine. So the biggest difference is between vegetarian and vegan. No eggs, no dairy, no none of that. Yeah, no cheese, no no dairy, no eggs. Okay. How about honey? Honey, because uh, I know some people. It's other sides. Yeah, some, some some people say it's okay. Some people don't. I don't necessarily like it anyway. I don't. I don't oh, go sure. for it. Yeah. So I don't. I'm not. <laughs> not a, <laughs> not a big guy. deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wipe it out. Okay. Yeah. So what can you eat as a vegan? Because I know nothing about any of this. Oh really? Yeah. Nothing. Well, so you know, it's it's more learning for me. Yeah, the, there is a surprising amount of vegan products. Okay. Okay, aka plant-based products. A lot of people, you know, vegan is uh, a lot more about uh, reducing your impact on uh, animals, on wildlife. You know, try not to wear you know leather products or, yeah, yeah. or wool and stuff like that. Uh, plant-based foods are becoming a lot more popular and i've talked to people that have been vegan for 10 years and they're like wow it's never been like this before and you know yeah yeah so you could go to any any supermarket and they have uh replacement meats mm. like you get something that tastes exactly like a burger or exactly like a piece of chicken or even like a whatever whatever really you're craving right. there's a substitute for it not necessarily the most healthy thing mm -hmm. However, they really help you transition from living your whole life eating burgers and pizzas and, and all these things to a plant-based version of those things, which helps gotcha. a lot. Okay. Okay. Uh, you could eat that. You could eat a lot of uh, 
I'm a big fan of eating fruit and vegetables. This is something I got used to as weight loss because you could eat a tremendous amount of vegetables. Really? <laughs> for a small amount of calories, yeah. I didn't know that. And you get a lot of health benefits, too. A lot of fiber, a lot of nutrients, a lot of things that you don't think about. Sure, sure. Okay. Uh, hmm. Butter. Yeah, butter is butter. dairy, right? Yeah, butter, butter is, is dairy. So you want to, yeah. you know, being get a vegan, yeah, get the butter out. Yeah, gotcha. butter. Okay. I mean, it's, 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 I understand, you know, people, people, when I talk to them about being vegan, they don't take into account that I wasn't vegan for yeah, the yeah, majority yeah. of my life. So it's just sure. like. Well, I just thought of when you, when you mentioned you can eat a tremendous amount of vegetables, I was like, okay, cool. With butter? No. No, no, no butter. butter. <laughs> I mean, you can put some olive oil on it or something, but uh, you're sacrificing calories. Sure. Eh, that's a whole other issue. You Where know? do you, you get your protein? I get a lot of my protein, uh, surprisingly, from vegetables, you know. You, really? Yeah, okay. There's, there's quite a, it adds up. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's not a, a, a huge amount of protein in a lot of vegetables, but when you eat a lot of vegetables, it adds up. And I, I try to actually get, because I'm uh, weight lifting weights, over about 150 grams of protein a day. Sure. So you need to get a, a fair amount of protein from your food. Because you got to build that up. Yeah. you got to put fuel into the muscles to build them. Yeah, absolutely. And also uh, there's supplementation, protein powders, and, 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 and drinks like that where you just mix your own and. I mean, that's very common with people that are into fitness and sure. you know, hit a protein shake or yeah, and a lot of uh, oatmeal and nuts and uh, stuff like that has a good amount of protein. So. Sure. Huh. I know none of this. Yeah. This it's an, interesting stuff. It's that, very, it, especially with no context. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't I don't know any of this. I just realized myself that butter's dairy. Because I'm dumb. <laughs> well, that's, you know, we don't think about these things. We don't think about. Of course. And that's huge for people. you got to think about where your food comes from. Sure. You know, don't let other people tell you what to think or what way to eat. Sure. But do the research. Absolutely. And you need to know where your food comes from. Whether Absolutely. you decide to be vegan or be uh, just eat meat all day and have that. And listen, there's, there's information out there on the Internet. Sure. It's accessible for everybody. You know, just. The f- getting out of the whole uh, sphere of ignorance to where food comes from. Sometimes, a lot of times that happens with obesity, too. You don't realize, you know, you're drinking sodas and you're, you're going in and you're just putting all this stuff into your body that's causing you to be dysfunctional on the inside. Sure, sure. <laughs> you didn't just get that way because you got that way. Yeah. Like there was reason. Like you said, you yeah. did it. Uh, I mean, it sounds really harsh. I don't like saying it. Like you did Go it ahead. to yourself. No, but that's like, okay. I don't know. Yeah. I guess. I mean, I guess lit- literally, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but in a, but it wasn't like a conscious thing. But was conscious was bringing yourself back. So what are you, what are you at now, your weight, roughly? Uh, this morning I weighed in at 218 pounds. Because you're tall. How tall uh, are you? I'm about six foot. Yeah, six I think foot. six I'm, foot. I'm 5'8", I think, 5'8", 5'9". Oh, okay. I think I'm five eight because the national average for like an American male is five nine, and yeah. I just didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> like right below <laughs> it. <laughs> Who makes these averages anyway? Get right? out of here! Yeah, man. what's like, going what's, on? Yeah, that's what food are they eating to get yeah, taller? I don't, <laughs> what, I don't know what's happening with that. Yeah, but, you know, like, yeah, just, just, those numbers are garbage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. I mean, you look really, really healthy. You look yeah, good, thank man. You. you look good. And so now you're at the part where it's like maintaining. And yeah, you're ma- lifting weights and getting yeah. bulkier, but in a good way. And that's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Maintenance is uh, is huge. A lot of people that lose weight on crash diets always gain it back. That, that was me. Listen, I'm not, you know, throwing any shots at anybody. Yeah, yeah, of course. I would, you know, lose 30, 40 pounds and be like, wow, I'm great. I'm this and that. And you, you didn't make any real changes. All you did is exercise more, change a couple of things that you ate. Yeah, but yeah. then you go right back to it and you gain the weight back. Sure. And it never becomes uh, something that you defeat, you know. Uh, sure. And I don't, I don't make light of drug addiction. I don't make light of alcoholism or anything like that. But eating is a huge and major addiction that goes overlooked in people's sure. lives, and it's, it, it really um, affects people in a major way with eating disorders and um, absolutely overeating and just not paying attention to what you're doing. Sure. And it, it, it could get out of hand really fast, and you. Uh, you go back and forth and lose weight and gain the weight and lose weight and gain the weight. Right. Uh, you got to make lifelong decision to say, I want to be healthy. Uh, there's ways to eat all of your favorite foods and a healthier version. Yeah. YouTube is a tremendous, beautiful resource. People out there uh, putting, you know, their passion out there and saying, this is how to cook something healthy. And, you know, there's, there's tons of great YouTubers out there. And yeah, it's of become one of the best, best resources for uh, weight loss. I feel cool. Cool. It worked. Yeah. And I, I just, 
I love that you're on the forefront of the cause now. You know, because like <laughs> I'm you working on it. Because yeah. that's the thing is, you don't have to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could have just done all these things and then kept it to yourself and just kind of done what you did. Yeah. But you went that extra step further, and are you opened the door and are like trying to get. I went flying. <laughs> <laughs> trying to, I talk with my hands. Yeah. <laughs> For those that don't know, I just threw a straw. <laughs> <laughs> but like you, you've opened the door and now you're helping other people get through it too. And it's a big deal what you did. Yeah. It's not something that was easy. It's not something that happened quickly, you know, and you you did it, man. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Like, you know, I really had to make a decision. Um, I lost a lot of weight on my own. I didn't say anything to anybody. I didn't tell any people. I was sure. kind of being a loner for a while. Which is fine. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that to, no. to better yourself. Yeah, and I, I decided, and I just, I kind of just made the decision that I'm going to be a confident person. And it's such a weird way to think about it. And like, yeah. I haven't really thought about it too much, but yeah. I was just not confident. I was very, like, introverted and, and shy. But one day I was just like, hey, I'm not going to be like that. I'm mm. just going to, I'm going to post online about what I've been doing, what I did. I'm going to put myself out there and I'm just not going to be that person anymore. Sure. Or at least not that part of me. I'm going to leave that behind. And I think that it is, I, I don't want to call it easy, but I, if you make that decision to do it, I think people can really break through their limitations. Sure. Just by something as simple as like, I'm not going to be that, yeah, whatever yeah. it is anymore. Absolutely. There's power like, in the decision. Yeah. And so, like, in your mind or in your spirit, whatever it is, you can make that crazy adjustment. Like, yeah. going to a chiropractor and they could just snap you back into place and you could kind yeah, of, of course. Kinda be this whole other person or at least be who you were always supposed to be. That is incredible. <laughs> that's, a, that's a perfect way to end this. Okay, can great. Can you believe we've been talking for over an hour already? Wow. That went by so fast. And you we did. covered so much tortoises, man. Tortoises are beautiful. Team tortoise. Everybody should go see a tortoise. Go see a tortoise. Yeah. <laughs> go look at them. That's right. Go see a tortoise. <laughs> but, dude, thanks for thanks for coming on. This was really, really fun. Yeah. That's the first time we've, like, talked. I love it, you man. Know? This is so good. Absolutely. Uh, where can people find you online? Well, I don't necessarily have a uh, huge social media presence. I do have Instagram. Yet. And please, you know, if you have any questions or you're concerned about weight loss, feel free to send me a message. It is Vince underscore on beast. It's the uh, opposite of being obese. Yes. On beast. <laughs> so look me up. I'm more than happy to talk to anybody that wants to chat about weight loss. Uh, if you like tortoises, hit me up. That's great. That's right. <laughs> it's my personal Instagram. I don't, you know, I don't do anything yet. But I, hopefully one day we do a YouTube or something. Be sure. Great. Keep it personal. That's yeah. the best part. Absolutely. You. <laughs> and with that, we have this and...